live. Hello! Happy Thirsty Thursday! I know that this is a really awkward kind of angle, but this is where we're at today. Because we are... Uh, bottling. <laughs> is that what we're doing? We're bottling! <laughs> I thought, I thought that, that was not... a lot smoother. I was like, because we are in this room trying this? Are we're bottling! Because we are tired? I don't know. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, we're bottling today. I'm going to see if I can pull us up on the other feed while okay. you um, yeah. have well, me answer questions safe. I don't know the answers to, so we're good. All right, so we're bottling today. We're bottling the Amarone wine that we made on a previous live, so if you haven't seen that and you're interested in seeing it, go check that out. It's a couple few lives back, um, but it should say making Amarone wine, something like that. Um, really excited because we're also taste testing, of course, and I'm really excited to try this specific wine because if you didn't watch the last live, this wine had raisins added to it. It had great. Did it have grape skins too? Yes, it did. It had raisins. It had grape skins, and it had oak added to it. So three different additives in a wine kit, and it's also a style of wine that we didn't previously have in stock, and we got it back in stock. So we're going um. to be taste testing that. All right, I'm old and I totally get Facebook, but can you fix the Instagram? <laughs> yeah, I'll do All right, we'll Instagram. Switch. Yeah, yeah, I'm of the the Facebook generation and she's of the Instagram gen generation. So, yeah. We're, we're trying to actually watch ourselves do this so we can see all your comments. So do you see the part where it says live? I didn't have that up in the corner. <laughs> I, know, I know you didn't. I know you didn't. <laughs> uh, okay. So now we can actually potentially view your comments. Well, okay. I can I can always view your comments. <laughs> My trifocals don't allow for that. <laughs> okay, so we're yeah we're gonna be bottling, then your guys' favorite we're gonna be <laughs> wax dipping, well corking and then wax dipping. Right, right. So you're you're the nice thing is you're gonna really see once everything's ready to be bottled, what do we use to bottle? What do we use to clean? Sanitize our bottles. What corker is our favorite? Because you know it's not a good day unless I talk about my favorite corker, our favorite corks, um, two different kinds of bottles we can talk about mm -hmm. today. Um, and then uh, we did have to do a little bit of a swerve when it came to wax dipping. We had our heart set on gold. We had our heart set on gold. She doesn't have beer sadness. This is not beer sadness. <laughs> um, and we have actually oversold gold, so it makes no sense for us to do it in gold. Yeah. We're gonna do black on black, which We're I think do is black kind on of black. cool. I think it'll actually be really yeah. cool. And, and especially since we're doing Halloween theme. Right. And it might go better than last time because we have practice now. Keyword we'll on see. might. We'll see. Um, but first, the most important thing, let's mm -hmm. taste test our wine. So this is the color that we're doing. It's really, really dark red. How's it smell? Now it has a wonderful smell. And the thing we have to keep in mind and, and you should keep in mind when you're bottling, unless you have done something like an orchard raisin or an island mist, in which case they require absolutely no maturation in the bottle, um, you're really tasting at this moment potential. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get a little bottle shock, it's going to be a little bit immature. So you're really just tasting the potential of what the wine will be six months from now. True. But the smell is fantastic. It smells really good. Yep, this is my favorite one. I love this one so much. And you loved it last time, too. I loved it last time. This is my favorite red wine, for anyone that mm -hmm. wants to know. And buy me a bottle. Of Amarone. God, no. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get people <laughs> that might actually. But, yeah. Um, the thing that I like about it is that I would expect, with it being so dark, and so many things added to it, especially, like, even the grape skins, I would expect it to have a lot of tannins to it, like, and really hit you, but it doesn't at all. I think, um, oh, I, oh gosh, look, I, I wish, I wish you guys were here to see how absolutely beautiful this is in the glass. So, it's not full of tannin, so it's not like that whole take your breath away when you drink it, although the dryness definitely hits you, even in the front of your mouth, but it's a pleasant dryness. I don't know if I said this last time, but... The, when you drink it, it's like that burn in the back of your throat, mm -hmm. similar to like if you were drinking liquor, like liquor. Mm -hmm. It's weird to me. I've never had that with wine. Like, do you not get that? Like, it feels 
feels really warm in the back of my it's throat. It's the dry. It's how dry it is. Is that what, is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, that's how dry it is. But also, I think it's very berry forward. Super berry forward, which is why I like it. Yeah, so I think it's kind of like how, the dryness of what you would say a beautiful cab would be, but it's got the berry notes of a Pinot Noir. Okay, I'll believe you. <laughs> I love that she just believes me. But she can tell me anything. No, I think that's why you like it though. Yeah. It's definitely well, it's okay. the dark berries. It's the rich berries. Well, so berries. you're saying you're saying what'd you say? Cab. Uh, a, it's the dryness of a cab. Yep. And, and it's almost like the boldness of a cab, but it almost has also the delicacy and the berryness of a oh, Pinot okay. Noir. Well, those are like two wines that I really like. And then they kind of like they it. had a baby and they became an Amarone. Yep. An Italian. Mm -hmm. Well, I purposely did small pours today. Because we have a lot to do. <laughs> we, we have to work. Mm. So, without further ado, it, um, we're going to start bottling. Now, we have 12 black matte bottles. We have cases of them. And today is the last day that you can get, if you buy a case of 12 black matte bottles, you can get these beautiful... Oh, I thought you handed me the no, I, I was like, black matte bottles? I'm like, I'm being van of white. Black matte bottles... And now, the next part of my sentence, you can get these beautiful Halloween labels. But today is the last day of the sale. And they look this pretty. You can get these for free. Zero dollars for these. Thirty-four ninety-nine for these. And you get 12 of them in a case. They're really cool. I'm really excited. Um, also, just a note for those of you that have been watching us for a while. We're doing our best to work on... Um, trying to get the camera so it's actually the right way. Yeah, we're, yeah <laughs> we really are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Do we have comments? Do we have comments? I don't think that we do. No, we just, we appreciate people joining us. Okay. While you're doing that, first of all, um, before we, you, we got here on the live, Courtney has um, been cleaning and sanitizing everything that we're going to need. Um, for sanitizing, she's used Star Sand, which is a no-rinse sanitizer. Uh, it's our favorite. If you use that one, you're going to notice it's got bubbles and stuff. Um, their tagline is, don't fear the foam. So don't feel that you should um, rinse it because it is a no-rinse sanitizer and we don't want you to rinse it. I think we do have a comment. Maybe. Do we have a comment? Love the new room and setup. Thank you. We love it too. We're, We're really excited it. about it. So this is an auto siphon. Um, it's pretty crucial for the bottling phase. So what this is, is it's a way to transfer the liquid from one container to another container. We have the tubing attached to it and we also have the combination bottle filler. This guy on the end here, what it does is you're going to press this down. It allows liquid to go through it. And then when you press up, it stops it. So you're not just like frantically trying to go from bottle to bottle and spilling wine or everywhere. Or trying to crimp the hose. I've done all those things. Yes. Um, I say all this as if this is going to be helpful in us not making a mess, but I really have the utmost no faith in us at all. <laughs> it's part of cooking. It's part of what we do. Um, this year that Paula is putting bottles in is just, uh, what's it called? An easy it's bottle a tray. fast rack. Fast rack bottle tray. Um, and it's just like a really convenient way to store your bottles while you're kind of in the process of things. And there's, um, there, there are many different ways to do this, but what we used to have to do is, um, we would be trying to get them to kind of like be up against, like on the counter up against the wall, don't sneeze, all the bottles will fall so they drain. And then this thing is fantastic. Or you can use... Or you can use... Dun, dun, dun. It's kind of dirty, bottle tree. Is. Yeah, a bottle tree is a little more traditional, but I like the fast rack because it's easier to store. And it seems a little less tippy. <laughs> Someone said, do you ever get sick and tired of bottling wine and say, just keg it? <laughs> I, I haven't, but I, I know we have some home brewers that do keg theirs. Okay. Um, which so, is pretty darn tricky. Here, wait. I'm going to fix Facebook really quickly because I don't think you guys can see this. 
There we go. We might be a little crooked, but you know. Very our lives. So what I'm doing is I'm inserting the auto siphon into our cardboard of wine that we have here. Now, a key thing that's going to be really helpful is if you put your bottles or whatever container you're transferring the liquid into below whatever you're using, or below your carboy that you're transferring it from. Um, gravity, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And when you create that prime, you're going to be less likely to lose the prime if it's going downhill. Now, like I said before, this combination bottle filler is attached to the tubing. Some people might think, my tubing doesn't fit my combination bottle filler. It's really hard to get it on. Um, a, a, a tip to make it easier to do is just get this a little bit hot, like run it under some hot water, and it'll make it nice and pliable and loosen it up, and you'll be able to put it on. Yes. So, when you start this, you want to make sure that this is pressed down so that you don't create a pressure system. I don't know where to go. <laughs> What? I don't know where you to go. You don't know where to go? I don't know where to go. Um, let's okay, see. I'm going to go back there. You're going to go back there? I'm going to go back there. This that is where works. I'm going to go. I'm always better behind the, the table. <laughs> Paula likes to hide behind I things. I do, I do. Um, so do you want to do this okay. part and I'll do that part? Absolutely. I'll also duck under here real quick. We're doing limbo here. And now I have to fix Insta. <laughs> okay. Lots of it. Let's see. I bought a bottling tree from you guys and also a fast track. Both are really great products. They really are. Yeah. They're tried and true, and they beat the heck out of the alternative of trying to figure out how to make this happen without a structure. Yeah. yeah. All right, so. Okay, so you're not going to see it go into the bottle, which is one thing. That's true. Yeah. Um, do we want to do one with the clear? We don't have the clear. Yeah, we're good. Okay. We're good. I'm going to pay attention. Okay, so the trick is you have to push this down because right now it's a closed system. With this not pressed down, if you start pumping that, there's nowhere for the air to go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. How, how do we know that, Courtney? We know that out of experience. There we go. Which is what people have when they try new things and are brave. <laughs> That's true. So I'm going to push right. this down. And, you're, gonna, and, and it's pump two it good pumps. And away we go. It is going to be kind of difficult to I'm see. I'm going to have to be, like, You're going to have to be super vigilant. vigilant. I like Did we practice that? Yeah, yeah. I know this is enthralling. It will be if, it, if I have Mount Vesuvius. Enthralling entertainment. Yeah, I got a roll of paper towels before we started this, and I think that that was a good call. I'm, I'm just nervous. <laughs> You're always nervous. Story of my life. I worry so no one else has to. Well, that's nice of you. My superpower. All, All right. right. Okay, so I see it kind of coming up. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to the very top of the bottle, and then when you pull this little booger out, it will go down to the right to the level, right level because it displaces the amount that you want for your cork. And your rule of thumb, legitimately rule of thumb, is that you want a thumb between the liquid, your wine, and the bottom of the cork. Cool. Okay, so we have filled one bottle. Sweet. And notice, when you lift it up, it doesn't go all over the place, so it's beautiful. Yes, boring. Should I set these here? I see. Well, what is well we're gonna we're gonna be corking. You know what? I think we want to set like all of them here, okay. and then we'll cork maybe right in front or something. Yeah, that works. And, and we'll if you're them. worried about any of the like the fuzzy foam and stuff in the bottles or on the bottles, the longer they drain, the less you'll have. So typically speaking, as I'm getting everything ready, I'll pull my bottles out to drain a little bit. And they won't be quite as foamy. Um, should I get the wax stuff ready while you're doing? Yeah, let's that? go ahead and okay. start. So interestingly, we yeah, you can talk about yeah, that we uh, are not at home and we don't have a stove. Oh gosh! And so um, <laughs> yeah, bottle number two, and we ha are using our convection cooktop which requires a very hefty stainless steel and so we just pulled out a brand new gorgeous um, eight quart brewers best basic pot and I'll show you 
guys quickly. It's it has there. graduate. Look at the back of it too. It's got graduated um, markings. It's a very, very nice quality stainless steel, and it works on the convection cooktop. So we are now owners of uh, of the new of a new brew pot, which we've not had in here. Um, I think the brew pot we've always used is liquid. So for anyone that remembers the last time we bottled. Uh, and did the wax, the wax beads. Paula brought in a little skillet that I was making fun of her for, a cast iron skillet. Mm -hmm. And she said, next time we need to do a soup can. So today, I quite legitimately dumped the soup that I was having for lunch out of this can, uh, cleaned it out, cut myself in the process, which is why there's oh, the I duct didn't tape. Know about that. Yeah, I figured I'd workman's comp, right? Yeah. yeah. And, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, I tried to put this on the induction burner, but because it's not heavy enough, it was beeping at me and yelling at me and saying that it wasn't going to work because it needs surface area. So we're putting this, it's gonna look a little silly, but we're putting this small soup can inside of this giant pot just to get it to heat correctly. Um, and then we're gonna put the wax in here so that it heats and we can dip it. We're using a little bit of a water bath inside there yep. so that it, it heats evenly. Someone said, what wine are you bottling? I came a little later. So we are doing an Amarone today. For anyone that's just tun tuning in, we're bottling an Amarone wine, and then we are doing the corking and the wax dipping. Did you bring over the box for the Amarone wine, or is it long gone? I did, yeah. I did. Okay, and it was, a, it was a, a, a RJS kit, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, so it was one of the um, on-premier... Uh, RJS kits, and we had never done an on-premier RJS kit, and it was impressive, I would say, to say the least. Um, how comprehensive it was, the very, very little bit of uh, water it required, and so our water-to-juice ratio was was incredibly awesome. Are you good bottling, or did you want to switch me? Um, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see you cook. Okay. <laughs> Courtney's not the cook in her house. I'm not the cook in my house at all. Um, so for the wax, what I'm doing is we just have these bags of colored wax beads. Uh, they are $15 for a bag, and they're going to last you through probably what? How, how many batches do you think? We didn't even use half of a bag, and it was 30 bottles last time. So probably like two or three batches. Roughly, yeah. Roughly two or three batches if you're doing the six gallon. Um, so $15 for that, we have blue, we have red, we have green, we have we have a lot of different colors. Silver, the silver is beautiful. Silver. We could have done and silver. And white, these. we could have done silver. But I, I don't know if that would go well with how goldy our labels are. It, I think the black is how we I like black yeah. on black. Well, you know I couldn't do orange. I know. I, we, I, you <laughs> wanted gold because yellow is your favorite color and it's close, but black is my favorite I color. I hate orange. I hate the color orange. I don't know why. I should have wore orange again today. Yeah, Paula likes to troll me. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing that, and we're putting them in here. And doing that. I'll move the camera and show you guys after she gets done bottling. She's just doing such a good job, you know? It's almost like I bottled before. <laughs> now, you can do, if, you, if you're doing a huge batch, you can buy the one, tr one tray, but lots more of the holders. And then you can stack the holders. I wouldn't probably stack them more than three high, but you can keep stacking so that you don't have to buy multiple trays. And, and then, because um, I'm all about being able to stack things together and then put them away in a cupboard. It's my life in a condo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. This is heating up, so we're good on They will heat pretty quickly. Yeah. I will, I'll bring you guys on a little you can go on a field, field trip? trip. Awesome. Field trip. Field trip. Why am I singing? Where is... You're just a happy camper. Okay. I feel like I'm you right now, trying to find the button. Oh, okay, there we really? Go. <laughs> We're in some shade, are we? Oh, I'm sorry, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I'm not saying it on camera. <laughs> did you actually mean to do that? I was, why? Did you actually mean to, like, use it? Like, throwing I something? I was trying to be like, you told me that I was that was, No, that was perfect. Car. That was perfect. You know, some shade. <laughs> that was perfect, hey, Paula. Me the lingo. Okay, so here's the setup that we got going on. So we got our Brewer's Best pots, and we got them on the induction burner, and then inside.
side, we have our wax in our soup can. Very high-tech stuff here, folks. Very high-tech stuff. You can do it. <laughs> um, you won't have to do that if you have a stove that's not an induction burner. Uh, we have our beautiful black mat bottles. I really love these things. Perfect for Halloween. If you're just tuning in... I think they're perfect for anything. They're sexy. They are sexy. What if you were doing Christmas gifts and you did this and you put, like, gold ribbon on them and you just spruced them all up? You could do a little, little holly and give it away as a gift. Oh, you get crazy. <laughs> I don't know. You just got really into it. It was really cute. Okay. I like it. Um, these. They're beautiful. And... If you work in a homebrew store long enough, you start to be a bottle snob. You're like, do you? I like these, and I don't like them. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you did that today with the corkers. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, that's true. Um, if you are just tuning in and you are wanting to buy black mat bottles, get them today. Because you will get free Halloween labels that are upside down and backwards. I should not watch you. Oh! I watch me. Darn it. Party fell. Okay, no. I'm gonna set these down before this okay, becomes I'm a problem. Really Clearly, not doing my job. <laughs> uh, so, a little backstory on that. This will be kind of fun. We were putting this room together, and we're talking about, you know, what we need to put on the walls, and what I need to order, and I want stainless steel table, and we're getting our new chairs and the table and the whole thing. And Courtney and I are having a great discussion about about, you know, just kind of how do we make this exactly how we want it. And Courtney said to me, and I can't even say this without laughing, I just don't want us to get too polished. I don't want us to get too fancy. And I said, don't you worry, it's still us. <laughs> we could be in the middle of a palace, we could still screw this up, not to worry. Oh, uh, it's really funny that you say that because I need something to stir this wax with. And you're using an ice cream scoop? What else am I gonna use? Like, all the spoons we have are this big. How am I supposed to start with that? Thing? Okay. Um, Maybe. Wait, I have an idea. I'll be right back. Are you going into the break room to grab a, yeah. a plastic fork? Yeah. Which I think is what we used last time as well. So I'm on the last bottle, which is going to make this tricky. Ooh. We have another bottle over there. Did that come out of the cleaning and sanitizing? I don't think it did. If you right. aren't sure, you should probably clean and sanitize again. I'll throw it into the sanitizer. But I'm going to leave this one half done. We are fancy there. And then I'm going to clean and sanitize this. We throw this in the, um, the star sand? Sure. Are we scorching or are we good? I don't know. How do you like that for an answer? You know, I'm kind of okay with it. Well, well, Courtney's arguing with the wax. So we haven't we haven't done it this way before. We sure have not. Uh, we have not, and that's okay. Um, we are going to be bottling this amaroni in what we would consider to be a 750 uh, cork finish Bordeaux bottle. Some people will also call it a claret, which is absolutely correct um, and that just indicates the shape of the bottle I call it kind of like more squared off up here at the neck and that's what that is it is a flat bottom it's not punched and my preference is a flat bottom because I think they're easier to use again and to clean what we're going to do is we're going to bottle them using Noma corks which is a synthetic cork they're a little bit more expensive than a composite cork, but they will give you a longer, um, safer shelf life for aging. And since this is a huge, big, bold Amarone red wine, as good as it is now, it will be better in three months, it will be fantastic in six, and in a year, you're going to think that, like, cherubs dropped this baby off to you. So the last thing you want is oxygen to somehow sneak its little self into this wine bottle and ruin it. And so we are going to use the Nomas for safety and security. Um, and to go with that, ooh, Paula. Um, 
get a little wild over here. This one is not quite as high. Put it in here. Um, but it will continue to. Okay, I'm going to attempt to lay this down. We'll finish these this bottling later because at this point we've only, I think we have 11 bottles up here and um, our trajectory would be roughly 30 bottles. Now, if you have had to rack often, there's been a lot of sediment, you're going to find that you're maybe not going to get to 30, and that's okay. Um, it's better to have really good, nice, clean bottles than to, say, have a bunch of them with a bunch of sediment in them. All right. I cannot guarantee anything on the way that this is sitting down. I don't normally stop. Update. Here's the open. fork is melting, <laughs> so the wax should be the wax should be going pretty soon. I'll show you. I just um, I'm like this much too short to actually reach in there. Oh, do you want me to do it? I'm taller. Um, yeah, you can. I I'll just do didn't it. want to make you do everything. Oh, you know, this is my life. Oh, I can do all the hard things. Um, yeah, I I just didn't want to show you because I'm over there like this. Give me a fork. I'll fix the cameras. Okay, you fix you get the camera, lady. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so these are all in bottles now. Um, and then should I get the I should get the corking stuff. You, you should. So here's this. So you don't you don't want to sanitize these corks because then it makes it kind of really hard to put them into the bottle. So and, and they're already they're they're clean and they're already in going into a sanitized bottle and um, if you buy like a hundred and you're not going to use them, just put them back in a Ziploc bag. It'll be fine. Alright, so this is Paula's favorite. It is the Portuguese floor corker. And it's fresh out of the box. Ooh, ah. This thing is $69.99. And we do have other corking options. Um, I have one of them right here, which is the double double lever corker. Uh, the problem with these guys is that you need a lot of force to push down, so you're going to need to use a different size cork. And when you use that different size cork, it allows more of the oxygen to get into the bottle because there's obviously more space in the bottle. So. When you use these, you're gonna use a different smaller size, smaller? Yeah, smaller size cork than you would. So the floor cork is number nine, corker. and the hand cork is number eight. So super easy with the Portuguese floor corker. All you do, you take this, you set it in the top. Then you take your bottle, and this is spring loaded, so you just press it down and you set it and this is nice and tight so you don't have to hold it or anything whereas with something like this you have to hold the bottle while also kind of holding this it's almost like you would need two people then you just simply press down and I'm really not even pressing that hard press down the bottle a little bit and boom and the cool thing about this is then you look at the top of it and you say, is that where I want it to be? And if you want it deeper, then you have this that can adjust it. So you can make it more shallow and so you can adjust. Also, you can do 187s on here, 375s and 750s. So and is this where we want it to be? It's pretty good. Pretty good? It's pretty close. So I, I like it when it's perfectly flat. Perfectly but, flat. This is know. a little bit above, but... Um, so I'll keep bottling these here. You can make a little bit of adjustment if you wanted to. So you adjust this up. Up oh, this way? Yeah, so, so that pushes it down further. But like, is that? Yeah, try it. Okay. And what's the worst that can happen, right? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And I love the part where it just engages and holds it. It holds it so firmly. We used to have our kids do this. See, I like that. See, it's a lot more flush this time. I'll show you guys the difference. It's just it's, a, it's, it's a small difference. You just have to adjust it. Yeah. And I got this out of the box today. 
And all I had to do is tighten the screw on the bottom. It's got a wing nut on the bottom. Just a wing nut, so it's really nice. How's the wax going? I'm struggling a little bit. That's okay. For anyone that for anyone that's on right now, does anyone have a like a struggle story about home brewing? We'd love to hear it. <laughs> Ours are usually on live. Share a struggle story. Share in the community. <laughs> Got three done. I was just, we're dripping. Oh. I'm just fixing our dripping. I was like, what are we doing? I'm walking around with the plastic fork dripping. It's all good. Something really exciting that we have coming up that I'm now allowed to talk about. I know that this is a wine, it's a wine show today. But I gotta talk about beer. You know me. Anyone that's a Grainfather fan, you are gonna be really excited because they have an all new brewing system out. And it's called the G40. And it's a really cool new brewing system. It's gonna be available later at the end of this month. So they gave us one to actually brew on. So I'm gonna be doing that later this month with one of our home brewers. And I'm really, really excited. Um, we have a couple ideas about what types of beer we're going to make. Ooh, have you guys, you guys have talked about it? Well, we talked about it. We wanted to do uh, something for Christmas. Good idea. So, if you guys have any ideas on Christmas beers, we'd love to hear them. I think that he, I think he maybe has an idea of a beer in mind that he sent me. Uh, but we're always open to ideas. I don't think I've screwed the wing nut in all the way on this. I'm Are you looking? Are you looking? Yeah. Um, and you can, as long as you hand tighten it firmly, you're good to Yeah, go. I didn't use a tool or anything. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing is then, too, if you want to be able to store it flat, you can take that off. Yep. All right, now we're, we're cooking. I had to add a little more water. For anyone that might just be joining us, uh, we are bottling Amarone wine today. And then we're corking it and we're wax dipping it. So we got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, we do. And we're doing it relatively um, sober. Yeah, I know. We've only been tasting. We're going to fix that next week, you know. Oh, 100%. Okay. I don't know what we have going on next week. I don't know, you sent it to me yesterday. <laughs> I'll have to read it. Okay, in the chat, really quickly. Comment if you think that this would be a good idea. This is me pitching live to Paula. I'm, have, I'm a little worried. So, we get, wait, why does this not? I don't know, I'm having technical difficulties. What happened? This isn't all the way up, so it's not wanting to. Ah. There. All right, you ready for it? So we get like a variety of different beers or wines, and they're in glasses, but you can't see through. Like, oh, well, they're see-through glasses. They're in glasses, right? They're in glasses. Okay. And then either one of us are blindfolded. You want me to get blindfolded in the live? Yes. And you're going to have, like, okay, so you have the five options, right? Let's just do beer. So you, you know there's a stout, you know there's a IPA, you know there, oh, she's dripping wax. You know that there's, a, like, the beer types, right? Then you taste test them with the blindfold on, and you have to try and say which one is which. <laughs> I could be the blindfolded one, I'd do it, and you can have a ball. Comment if you think that's a fun idea. Please comment, I want to do it. <laughs> you are adventurous. I would be afraid that Todd would get involved and I'd be drinking something like ketchup or something. That's true, that's true. You know, like, Todd has only not been fired yet today. Todd's story for y'all. Y'all, on Sunday Southern. Um, You've lived everywhere, everywhere else. <laughs> 
everywhere except the cell. Todd's story for you guys. We have a mouse in the office. We have multiple mice in the office. And he, he caught one the other day. And he went into Asia's office and he's like, look at this mouse that I caught. And she thought he was joking around. But luckily he just showed her a picture, not like the actual thing. Now that's weird, that didn't go in as deep that time. Did it work its way out a little bit? Yeah. Maybe. Yes. But they're all... Now, sh should I put the labels on before we wax them? Oh, I think, I think, I think that will be after, because we're kind yeah. of a disaster with the wax. Yeah. Did it actually melt though? Yes, ma'am. See, I was smart today. And not only did I give us smaller pores than normal, because we have to actually be productive, I did two different types of wine glasses so I could remember who's was who's. Oh, you did! Look at you. Notice, Paula's is a lot emptier than mine. <laughs> yeah. But it's not because it's not good. Oh boy, I feel like we're in the other room again. It's gonna hide me here from that thing. It's, uh, I wonder if I need to leave it on just a little bit longer. But I wonder too, if like last time we had it too thin. Maybe. Maybe. So we got our can with the black wax. Do we need? I think we need it to be a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Here. Don't, that'll burn you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, I got this. Okay. So turn it back on. We're like seconds away though. Why do we have this out? Well, I had that out because when you get to the bottom of the bottle of the cardboard when you're bottling, I like to put the wedge underneath it and displace the um, liquid so I get all of it out I can possibly get. But we stopped at a so lot of bottles. Let's show that briefly. Oh, you got minutes. the back of a the back of our other phone here. Well, you know, one person's going to get it this way, and the other person is going to get it this way. But essentially, you trip over the cork of your toy corker, and then you use this carboy wedge, and you stick it underneath the carboy to kind of tilt it, so that when you get to the bottom of the carboy, you can get all the liquid out without having to hold everything with two hands. So, And then... I'll try and set you guys up. Um, this is what we got going on over here. With I think the, uh, we got it. You think we got it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. Okay, let's. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Let's turn the cameras turn around off. here. Turn it around. Turn it around. All right. Oh, yeah, that looks good. That looks pretty good. So we got our black wax our black bottles for those of you that are just tuning in we are wax dipping the top of these and i'm yeah, excited exactly what we want see look at that yeah i think that's pretty good okay so okay let's start i'll set you guys back up so you can see again speaking of holding a million things with two hands <laughs> One there, and we got my tripod likes to be a little special sometimes. All right, we're good. <laughs> so, to show you an example of last times, this is kind of what we got with the yellow. And we had we tried to do the dripping thing. No. <laughs> Paul says no. Um, maybe here. We clearly are not makers, Mark. This is one of our examples of us trying to do the dripping thing. At one point, you can still kind of see it has like the marks on it. It had like this macaroni penguin type of a vibe <laughs> shooting out. It didn't look good. It wasn't what we were looking for. <laughs> All right, I think you should go first. Oh. Okay. Start my life, right? All right. Only because you can fire me if I don't. <laughs> Only because. All right. So 
I can't touch the can though, which also makes it difficult. I'm just gonna do it just like that. See, but I think that's pretty. Well, I got a little glob right there. Yeah. But that's, that's actually pretty fault. good though. You're right. It's, it's not, not your fault because it's, you know, there might have been a glob in there. You guys, look at it. That looks pretty cool. I'm totally gonna try this. It's black with black. I don't, okay, I don't think it's any gold, don't get me wrong, but I actually think it looks pretty dope. Yeah, the, the gold would be a contrast, but the black on black is just kind of sexy. Like, if you were to make it into, a, like, a black tie event type it, of thing. It's kind of mysterious, like, what's in there? You don't know, it could be poison. Could be poison, could be amarone. I did get a, go I did get a glob on the back, I think. This is what I got here. The nice part is if you hate it, you can just peel it off and like redo it. There we go. It's really not a big deal. Ooh, that looks polished. I'm gonna wait though. I think I want to do one more because it, it didn't. Oh yeah, because last time we, we did. did multiple dips and it seemed to work out better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, you're gonna go for it again. Yeah, I'll go for it. Okay, I'm gonna let this one dry. I'm so tempted every time I go to like touch the can, I'm like, oh wait, you can't do that. Not highly recommended. It would be warm. This came out of boiling water. So, in all honesty, we're doing these a little shallow. I feel I would probably do. Would them. you? I would maybe do them a little bit. I mean, okay. it's it's up to whatever you want. Because I think it's about perfect. I think. What do you guys think? This is where we're at right now. I would maybe do it a little longer, but I think it looks. I think it looks good. It's actually going way better than last time. <laughs> Experience, right? And then while you wax it, I'm going to try this one a second time to see if it even makes a difference. I think it's a lot... It's just fuller. Yeah. It's got a bubble though. It's like paint, right? Yeah, like I guess. It's of paint. Oh, you got the... <laughs> this poor fork. Now it has my fingerprint in it. What are we doing for time? Oh, we're actually doing pretty good for time. Comparatively. Comparatively. Yes. Normally we just sit and talk for 42 minutes, I don't know how. Uh, we have a lot to say. Oh, you got globs again. I got globs. I'm a glob monster. Right. I must have one little section that didn't get that fully, didn't get fully uh, melted. Well, okay. And I think, you know what, if you just had a regular stove and you could just use like some kind of cheap... So that's what a glob looks and like. And that you just use it over and over again. I think that's the answer. Yeah. There's nothing regular about us. <laughs> Unless we took this show on the road and we went take to my house. Take this show on the road. Oh my gosh. I would love to go to your house. She has a yellow chair at her house that is gorgeous. I'm going to steal it one day. Don't tell her. Um, okay. Then the last step. I'm so excited. I've been waiting all month for this. The last step is taking these labels that our very talented graphic designer <laughs> created. I know I've shown them, but I'm very excited. And putting them on the bottles. So let's do that. I don't know if I get, is there a trick to making sure they're centered or do you just have to be competent? I'm going with number two. No tricks. Dang. Gosh, Paula, this looks good though. I like the black on black. I know it's not what you had in mind. I, but actually, I think it looks good. I like it. I Sometimes it the contrast good. isn't necessary, especially when you want the label to pop. Do you think that we got bought out of the gold because people bought this? Like, or no? I don't know what happened. Okay, so I want to mention it again. You can make your very own bottle of how hello wine wine just like this with the same label enjoy your booze on the back you can make it buy a kit or buy a case of 12 black mat bottles and you'll get these labels free but today is the last day it's not a drill like today is for real is the last day so get them now right now and we did it we did it wait I'm, i have to do more wax we okay have, we have to heat up i don't want it to be real shallow Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, so we're going to so get up our wax. We're going to finish this all up and um, finish bottling the rest of it. I think it's so cool. I'm really mm -hmm. stoked at how it turned out. 
-hmm. but, and we'd love to see some pictures of anything that you guys have already done. Like if you've done wax dipping or you've made your own labels or you have some creative way that you are putting together gifts or wine that you just enjoy for yourself. Tag us at Homebrew Ohio. Uh, I'll mention this briefly too. Today is the last day of our photo contest. It's the, is it the 30th or is it the 29th? 29th. Tomorrow is the last day of our photo contest. And all you have to do is share a picture with the hashtag Homebrew Ohio Photo Contest and then tag us at Homebrew Ohio and you'll be entered it for a chance 30th. to win. I lied. You'll be entered for a chance to win. Oh, it's the 30th? Yeah. Well, anyways, share your pictures with us. You'll Today's be entered you'll be entered for a chance to win fifty dollars to our online store. Are we picking up next week too? The winner? Yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. Anyways, alright, hope you guys enjoyed. We will see you next week. Happy Thirsty Thursday.